Yeah, good morning and welcome back to the NPTEL lecture series on classics in total synthesis part 1 and this is Professor Krishna Kaliyappan from IIT Bombay. So, we will continue our discussion on total synthesis of natural products today. In the last class we talked about a total synthesis of an alkaloid called perhydrohistriomycotoxin by E. J. Corey which involved you know two important key reactions one Barton reaction and the second one is Beckman rearrangement. Okay. So, today we will talk about one of the most complex alkaloids synthesized in 20th century. So, that molecule is called strychnine. I am sure many of you might have heard the name strychnine is it was uh, you know one of the most complex molecules uh, isolated in uh, this 1918 and this is the structure of uh, strychnine and in fact is one of the first alkaloids to be first complex alkaloids to be isolated. It was isolated from strychnus nax vomica in 1918 and it was considered as one of the dangerous uh, natural product because if you consume anything more than 50 milligram of this natural product it is fatal ok. It is so dangerous, so so bad and uh, this poisonous material should be handled very very carefully. In fact, many novels and poetry uh, uh, those who are uh, familiar in reading English novels uh, know that there are many stories where strychnine was given to poison and kill people. Okay, so this has been routinely used in many novels. From the complexity point of view, if you look at this molecule, what are the challenges one can expect from synthesis point of view? First of all, how many rings are there? See, 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. There are 7 rings there are 7 rings one can imagine you know I am talking about when the molecule was isolated in 1918. So, making a molecule of this complexity with 7 ring is not a joke and more importantly even the structural elucidation took considerably long time. It was isolated in 1918, but the correct structure was proposed by Woodward correct structure was proposed by Woodward after 3 decades. Okay. It took 30 years to propose the correct structure of strychnine. But interestingly if you look at how Woodward proposed the correct structure of strychnine was based on you using UV. You know so you one should know those days NMR was not there, X-ray was not there. So, one has to depend on two important techniques. One is degradation ok. Those days strychnine was available in large quantity ok one could isolate strychnine in large quantity. So, you keep on doing degradation ok until you reach a known compound ok. That is how you know ok when you do a degradation you can expect what reaction it can undergo and what are the products you got based on that you can work back work back and then assign the structure. So, those days degradation played a very very important role in assigning the structure. Nevertheless, the final proof for structural assignment of any natural product comes only in the form of synthesis ok it was those days. And you can imagine there were 400 research papers in the 30 years, 400 research papers have been published just to talk about only the structural elucidation of strychnine ok. So, partial structural elucidation 400 research paper I do not think any other natural product would have got that much attraction particularly about structural assignment ok that much complex this molecule was. And finally, whatever structure Woodward proposed in 1948 based on degradation and UV was confirmed later by X-ray. Then you can imagine the intuition, the knowledge of various organic reactions by Woodward really stood very tall 
can exactly he proposed the correct structure without even looking at other techniques. So, that tells volumes about his knowledge of organic chemistry. And when you talk about synthetic challenges as I mentioned already there are 7 rings ok. So, sev uh, making 7 rings those days is not a joke it was a very very complex problem and one has to deal with it ok. And if you look at the number of stereo centers if you look at the number of stereo centers there are 6 stereo centers ok in this molecule. And among these 6 stereo centers 5 stereo centers are in this ring ok. 5 stereo centers are attached to one ring and next task is all the 5 stereo centers of this ring are contiguous ok. So, this makes much more challenging because you have to introduce 5 stereo centers in one ring and these 5 stereo centers are contiguous ok. And another interesting aspect of this molecule is this 7 membered ring, this is a unique 7 membered ring which was not heard or not seen in other natural products. The first time they have seen such unique 7 membered ring in an alkaloid ok. Then there is a spiro center. So, is it possible to locate the spiro center in this molecule? You can make easily you can see the 7 rings, but can you look at the spiro center? There is one spiro center that is this, there is one spiro center. So, these are some of the synthetic challenges one could foresee before starting working on synthesis of strictly ok. After proposing the correct structure of strychnine based on various degradation studies Woodward thought definitely this is the molecule one should make ok. So, the more the challenge better for synthetic chemists to work on that because they, they, they used to love challenge ok. And that time he made a very very famous statement and that statement is if we cannot make it if we cannot make strychnine then we will take it ok. You know if you take strychnine what will happen ok. That is how you took this as a challenge and started working on strychnine. And as you know uh, during his days the retrosynthetic concept was not there. So, that is why I am not going to talk about retrosynthesis of strychnine by Woodward. Nevertheless we will see how he could go ahead and then make strychnine in reasonably good quantity ok. So, before that as I said the structure of strychnine was arrived based on combination of spectral data and degradation studies. The degradation studies of strychnine when you degrade strychnine there are two important sub structure ok. One was isostrychnine. So, isostrychnine and strychnine if you look at Isostrychnine can be converted into strychnine. How? If you migrate this double bond, if you migrate this double bond, you become alpha beta unsaturated system, followed by oxamicyl addition will give strychnine. So, that was the first degraded product from strychnine. The second degraded product was called VLAN Gumlich aldehyde. If you look at this, you can see that this is a lactal is not it? This is a lactal. If you do a stabilized Wittig reaction, if you do a stabilized Wittig reaction ok. This lactal means it is aldehyde ok and alcohol. The aldehyde will undergo this stabilized Wittig reaction to get alpha beta unsaturated ester, then it can form an am amide and then it can undergo oxamical addition to give strychnine. So, in one step one can convert VLAN gumlich aldehyde to strychnine ok. So, if you look at subsequent total synthesis of strychnine ok, subsequent total synthesis of strychnine most of the synthetic groups either used this key intermediate or isostrychnine as a key intermediate. So, they come up to this and from here it is known ok. What are the key disconnections 
okay i will not go into the complete retrosynthesis what are the key disconnections of some of the synthesis there are many synthesis i will i will talk about only four total synthesis of strychnine and today i will talk about woodward's total synthesis so woodward's idea was first to construct the spiro system and the spiro system how we construct is first you make this imenium ion okay this imenium ion then use the lone pair on the nitrogen of indole ring that will come and then neutralize the positive charge on the imenium so that is how you construct the spiro as well as the c ring okay now overman overman almost followed similar trend that is the imenium ion but what he did was the spiro system was constructed by a reaction called manich reaction okay so this enol so now this will come and this will attack so the manich reaction was the key reaction in overman's total synthesis of strychnine and magnus magnus also almost followed similar method of woodward's okay we form a minium and the indole indole double bond attacks and neutralizes the positive charge on the nitrogen one synthesis which was completely different than these three approaches and was well received was viresh ravel's so viresh ravel constructed this particular ring okay this is a six member ring so always when you see a six member ring what one reaction which should come to everybody's mind is deal solder reaction isn't it normally when you talk about six member ring two reactions will come to your mind one is robinson annihilation sequence the other one is deal solder reaction so he cleverly used deal solder reaction as the key reaction to construct this cd this ring okay okay so these are some of the key disconnections used by synthetic chemist across the globe for the synthesis of strychnine now let us as i mentioned let us discuss total synthesis of strychnine by rb woodward today so he started with fischer indole synthesis first he started with phenyl hydrazine and treated with this ketone uh, this two upon treatment with polyphosphoric acid form this indole okay so now what he has to do is he has to functionalize the carbon number 3 okay he has to functionalize carbon number 3 so what he did he used a manich reaction okay so this is obtained from formaldehyde dimethylamine okay and hcl okay this this is the you know standard intermediate for manich reaction so he introduced first the ch2 nme2 here ch2 n me2 okay afterwards he added methyl iodide so that means already you have a tertiary amine the tertiary amine was quaternized okay this tertiary amine was quaternized so now once you have quaternized amine it can be a good leaving group it's a good leaving group so if you treat with any nucleophile the nme3 is a good leaving group it can go so what he did he took this compound and treated with sodium cyanide okay when you use sodium cyanide it underwent sn2 displacement to get the corresponding cyanide okay so basically in three steps he could introduce this functional group that is ch2 cn next one has to reduce the cyanide so that was easily done by treating with lh that is lithium aluminum hydride so he could get ch2 ch2 nh2 in good yield the subsequent step was the cyclization step okay the key step to make the spiro system the first step first step was just make the imine just make the imine you have an aldehyde and you have an amine you make the imine then you treat with tosyl chloride what will happen with uh, tosyl chloride when you treat with tosyl chloride the imine nitrogen will be tosylated imine nitrogen will be tosylated okay so that is what happened you can see first imine is formed then n tosylation took place then followed by cyclization all this happen when you treat with tosyl chloride to get the spiro system okay so now you can see you have made 
the spiro system and you introduced one chiral center and in the process this became imine ok. So, once it becomes imine you have to reduce the imine is not it. The imine was reduced to the corresponding amine by sodium borohydride and that resultant NH the indole NH was acetylated to get the corresponding N acetyl group. So, now you can see there are 3 chiral centers 1, 2, 3 were fixed using this reaction ok. All are relative ok, all are relative and they are not absolute ok. Next step he did Ohs analysis. Guess what would have happened? When you do Ohs analysis of this what would have happened? Are there the double bonds? No. You have two aromatic rings, isn't it? You have two aromatic rings. More substituted double bonds will be cleaved under Ohs analysis condition. Okay. So, if you look at this aromatic ring and this aromatic ring, this is the double bond. Okay, this is the double bond which is tetra substituted, isn't it? This is the double bond which is tetra substituted. Now, if you cleave this particular double bond selectively, if you cleave this particular double bond selectively, what we will get is the corresponding diene, okay. And the terminal, since you had OME, this will become ester, okay. So, diester. Okay. So, this is a very very important and clever idea of using aromatic ring, okay, aromatic ring to generate the bis ester using selective Ohs analysis that was one of the classical thinking. Okay. Then you treat with HCl methanol, okay. HCl methanol first it removes the acetate, first it removes the acetate, then what will happen? you have that NH is not it. This NH will attack this ester because if you rotate this CC bond, if you rotate this CC bond it will come here. So, what will happen? You get the corresponding lactam, you get the corresponding lactam that is one step, one thing. Second thing is that double bond which is outside now isomerized okay, to this ring. So, two reactions happen, one the N acetyl was cleaved followed by cyclization, the second the double bond isomerization to get this pyridone ring, ok. Now, if you look at strychnine out of 7 rings, 4 rings are constructed, 1, 2, 3, 4, ok, 3 more rings to be constructed. The fifth ring Okay, the fifth ring here was constructed using a Claisen reaction. You have COTME and COTET, one can generate anion here and attack. So, that is what happened and for that before trying to do this base catalyzed or base mediated the Claisen reaction, what happened? This tosyl group, the presence of tosyl group created trouble, okay, the tosyl group got you know eliminated and then you it, sometimes it created double bond here, double bond here, it, it gave complex mixture. So, what he thought was first let, let us remove the tosyl group. So, he removed the tosyl group with HI and red phosphorus, but when you try to remove the tosyl group with HI and red phosphorus, the esters also will get hydrolyzed, esters also will get hydrolyzed. So, that is how you get the dicarboxylic acid. Then no problem the NH was acetylated with the acetic anhydride pyridine to get the diacid ok. Diacid can be easily converted into the bis ester by diisomethane. The diester by diisomethane treatment you get the, the diester. Now, if you do the Claisen, Claisen reaction sodium ethoxide will generate anion and an attack the ester. So, you will get the corresponding 
beta keto ester. But when he tried to do that, the epimerization was taking place at this curve. Epimerization was taking, you can see what was the stereochemistry here and what is the stereochemistry here. So, the after epimerization, the cyclization takes place, okay, leading to the formation of beta keto ester. Okay. So, this is what you wanted, but this CC bond formation that is uh, the epimerization happened and then you got this combo. Okay. No problem. Next, what one should do is you have to remove the ketone, you have to remove the ketone, you do not want the ketone, there you want CH2. Okay. So, the keto ester, as you know, the keto ester can exist in enol form. Okay. So, once you have this in enol form, you can convert that into corresponding enol tosylate. So, if you treat with tosyl chloride pridine, it forms a corresponding tosylate. Okay. Basically, you want to make this compound. Okay. So, now once the tosylate is there, one can think of addition elimination reaction with sodium benzene thiolate. Okay. So, this will give you the corresponding SBN. So, this will undergo addition and followed by when it comes back, the tosyl group will go. Okay. So, now SBN, as you know, SBN and then double bond can be reduced under hydrogenolysis condition. First, Rani nickel will remove SBN, then simple hydrogen and palladium carbon will reduce the alpha beta unsaturated ester to give this carbon. Okay. So, now if you look at this closely, you have made 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 rings are made. Okay. Now, you have to connect this ester to this, okay. you have to connect this ester to the amine. So, first he hydrolyze the ester to carboxylic acid with potassium hydroxide methanol and that time this particular carbon also underwent epimerization. Because when you draw a confirmation, you draw a possible confirmation of this molecule, after epimerization this carboxylic acid occupies equatorial position. Okay. That is why it undergoes epimerization when you treat with potassium hydroxide and methanol to get alpha carboxylic acid. Okay. So, you have the alpha carboxylic acid and in fact this is the compound this is one of the compounds prepared in large quantity from strychnine by degradation. Okay. This is one of the compounds prepared in large quantity from strychnine by degradation. Okay. And this is also called relay compound. What is relay compound? Okay. What is relay approach? Okay. So, before I go further, I will talk about what is relay approach. So, those days, when they work on total synthesis of complex molecules. Okay. So, they have to start from some simple commercially available starting materials and then they go further. After 10, 15 steps, you see uh, you will have 1 milligram or 2 milligram. Okay. But interestingly, they will reach a very, very important intermediate. That intermediate, they might have isolated from the natural product through degradation. Okay. Suppose if X is the natural product, through degradation after few steps they get Y. Okay. Now same group or some other group works on the total synthesis of the natural product X and they follow a certain pathway and then reach Y. Y is the compound which from the natural product they could degrade, degrade and get it in large quantity. Now what they do? They have already established a method for making Y from simple starting material. Okay, they already established the method for making Y. Now, what they will do instead of going back and then starting from the star commercially available starting material to make Y, what they do? They take Y which was available from natural product by degradation because it is available in large quantity. By synthesis, they might have made only small quantity. They will take this uh, degraded product again from the degraded product they try to convert, they try to achieve the synthesis of the target molecule X. So, that is called relay approach. Okay. So, what, what 
Woodward has used here as relay approach. So, strychnine is available in plenty because from natural source. Now, when you when you do potassium permanganate oxidation, as you know, this double bond gets cleaved. Okay, this double bond gets cleaved. So, one side it becomes ketone, other side it becomes carboxylic acid. And not only that, not only that this becomes ketone, it also oxidizes the adjacent one, adjacent CH2 to get a keto keto lactone. Okay, it's a keto lactone. The next step what he did, so this is also called strychninonic acid. So then sodium amalgam, sodium amalgam selectively reduces this keto in the presence of two lactams. It will not touch the lactam, it will reduce only the ketone to get the corresponding alcohol. Now this alcohol upon treatment with base, what happens if you have hydrogen here, see this, this hydrogen is acidic, so base will pick up this proton and it undergo elimination to give this alpha beta and saturated lactam. Okay. So, this Woodward and his group made in large quantity. Okay. This is also called strychnine alone. Okay. Now, if you treat with acetic anhydride, acetic anhydride pyridine, so what you get this OH will become OAC and base treatment also migrates the double bond. Base treatment, you can see the base treatment migrates a double bond from alpha beta to beta gamma. Okay. From this now he treated with mercuric acetate. Okay. Mercuric acetate, so what happened? It introduced another double bond, okay. one more double bond introduced to get the 6 membered lactam, 6 membered lactam. What he has to do? He has to hydrolyze the acetate and then the resultant alcohol if you oxidize with chromium trioxide you get the corresponding keto lactam. This upon treatment with H2O2, H2O2 as you know it can undergo bayer willigar oxidation here, okay. bayer willigar oxidation followed by hydrolysis this becomes the corresponding carboxylic acid, this becomes corresponding carboxylic acid and this undergoes decarboxylation and then you get corresponding NH. So, this much happens in the first step that is hydrogen peroxide, mayor bayer willigar oxidation and hydrolysis this becomes this becomes carboxylic acid and this becomes NH that NH is acetylated to get this carboxylic acid. So, now you know Woodward has come up to this stage starting from simple phenyl hydrazine he could come up to this stage. The same compound Woodward also got it by degradation from strychnine in large quantity. So, now what he felt this compound made from strychnine in large quantity could be used further instead of starting from simple starting material. So, and here also you can see that uh, ester gets hydrolyzed to get the carboxylic acid. Then once you have that he treated with acetic anhydride. So, basically he wants to decarboxylate this one okay, and introduce COCH3. So, when he treated with acetic anhydride pyridine first the carboxylic acid was acetylated, carboxylic acid was acetylated COOCOCH3. Since you are using pyridine, so what happened the pyridine picks up this hydrogen, pyridine picks up this hydrogen then it attacks the acetyl carbonyl group. Basically when that happens you get a 4 membered ring. Okay. The 4 membered ring if you see it can undergo elimination of carbon dioxide, 4 membered ring can undergo elimination of carbon dioxide and when it happens then you get the corresponding acetyl group. So, this is what he wanted, he wanted the COCH3 that he did cleverly by treating with acetic anhydride and pyridine. Now, Again he has to treat with acetic anhydride pyridine to get the N acetate and aqueous HCl methanol. Okay. Not only N acetate this also become enol acetate, this COCH3 become enol acetate. Then if you hydrolyze with HCl methanol it becomes the COCH3 and also it becomes NH, this becomes NH. Selenium dioxide oxidation as you know if you have COCH3 selenium dioxide oxidation will give 
COCHO. So that is the first step, it forms COCH, CHO. Now this NH intramolecularly will attack the CHO to form the aminol, to form the aminol. Now the aminol again will get oxidized with selenium dioxide to get the keto lactam. So now if you look at this carefully, we have made 6 rings, okay, 6 rings are done. So, 7th ring that 7 membered ring has to be done. So, now you have lactam and ketone. So, you can differentiate ketone from lactam. So, he added sodium acetylate. So, that added to this ketone followed by reduction of the triple bond with LAH. You got the double bond. Lithium aluminum hydride in addition to reducing the triple bond to double bond, it also reduced the lactam to corresponding amine. This on treatment with HBR, okay. allylic rearrangement took place and then you got isostrictin. Okay. HBR, it forms allylic rearrangement to get the BR, allylic bromide. This on treatment with H2SO4 water, you get the corresponding alcohol. What is this? This is nothing but isostrychnine. And we all know isostrychnine uh, has been already converted into strychnine by base treatment. So, he simply treated this isostrychnine with potassium hydroxide methanol and it underwent first isomerization of the double bond to alpha beta unsaturated system followed by oxamicyl you got strychnine. So this was considered as one of the most advanced and classical synthesis in 20th century and this actually opened uh, many, uh, many synthetic methods and there are many total synthesis of strychnine reported since then. We will, we will discuss at least 3 more total synthesis of strychnine in the next class. Okay? Thank you.